letters, making up the DNA in the human gene. In 1860, as the country was on the verge of civil war, a group of visionary civic leaders led by William Cullen Bryant founded New York Medical College on the principles of moral idealism and the advancement of public good. Concerned about unhealthy conditions in post-industrial revolution New York City, the founders believed that medical education needed to change. No longer, they felt, could unsanitary conditions and outdated medical procedures define the care that patients received. Their beliefs, quite radical at the time, centered on homeopathy, whose tenets included fresh air, exercise, a healthy diet, moderation of medicinal dosage, and perhaps most important, a philosophy that all patients, rich or poor, should be cared for with compassion and sensitivity. The founders and earliest supporters of New York Medical College were legendary and forward thinkers of their day. Jacob Beakley, William Cullen Bryant, William Todd Helmuth, Timothy Field Allen, Walter Gray Crump, Sophia Clements Lozier, Royal Samuel Copeland, J. A. W. Hetrick, Jr. They were deans, presidents, faculty and alumni, men and women of action and advocacy, who worked tirelessly in their efforts to revolutionize medical education, open doors for women and minorities, and make treatment accessible to the poor and the disadvantaged. The college is proud of women like Dr. Emily Stowe, who became the first female Canadian physician, Dr. Susan McKinney Stewart, the first female African-American physician in New York State and the third in the nation, and Dr. Jane Cook Wright, appointed associate dean at the college in 1967, making her the highest ranked African-American woman at a nationally recognized medical institution. In 1928, the college instituted the nation's first minority scholarship program at a medical school under the leadership of Dr. Walter Gray Crump. Dr. Geraldine Burton Branch, an alumna who received one of the first of those scholarships, now carries on the legacy as a scholarship supporter. During World War II, the college responded to the need to expand the nation's medical corps by introducing an accelerated program that required students to complete the demanding four-year curriculum in just three years. The novel program earned the college commendations from the Army and the Navy for helping the wartime effort. In 1888, the cornerstones were laid for Flower Free Surgical Hospital making New York Medical College the first medical school in New York to own its own hospital, supported by benefactors like Roswell P. Flower and John D. Rockefeller. Since the college's first affiliation with Metropolitan Hospital in 1875, its network has grown to include more than 20 hospitals and medical centers of all sizes in cities and suburbs, providing nearly 3,000 students, residents, and fellows with a wide diversity of learning environments and clinical experiences. What began as an ideal grew into a university one that continued to offer a more challenging curriculum, even when other reputable schools thought such high standards unnecessary. Throughout the years, the college held to its principles while striving to meet the changing needs of a fast-moving world. In the 1970s, the college was invited to relocate to Westchester County by a group of community and business leaders who recognized the need for a teaching hospital in this fast-growing suburb of New York City. The move allowed the college to build and enhance its teaching and research facilities, add new degrees and programs, and to begin its robust affiliation with Westchester Medical Center. From its early years, the college has taken a leading role in management of public health threats. Royal S. Copeland, who was dean of the college from 1908 to 1918, later headed the New York City Board of Health during the Spanish influenza pandemic. 
Dr. Edwin Kilborn, who helped develop the first swine flu vaccine in the 1970s, later established the laboratory at New York Medical College that continues to provide the seed stock for each year's flu vaccine. The lab was the first to submit a usable H1N1 seed vaccine as the nation prepared for this latest threat and was singled out by the CDC to supply a faster growing strain. Over the decades, members of the faculty and alumni have made significant discoveries and advances in Lyme disease, microsurgery, radiation medicine, cardiovascular disease, cataract surgery, fertility preservation, bioethics, and cancer research. These discoveries serve the public interest as they are transferred to biomedical companies for commercial development, from the researcher's bench to the patient's bedside. As we move further into the 21st century, the college remains committed to the original beliefs of its founders, to provide the finest medical and health sciences education, one that shapes and sharpens minds, develops unique abilities and skills, and guides all who pass through its halls to become caring, compassionate, and competent healthcare professionals. Today, as the college celebrates a proud 150-year anniversary, we are reminded that what began as a vision of forward thinkers has become a solid foundation of the way medicine should be taught and practiced, a foundation that will sustain our mission as we move boldly forward into our future for many more years to come. New York Medical College, building on the excellence of our past.